That's a very good question. Sister, that's a very good question. Islam, Christianity and Judaism, all of them claim to believe in the one true God. But in practice, we find something else. Let's analyze the different concepts of God and see which one is truly monotheistic. The relationship with our neighbors to our parents is all a form of worship. Yeah. So the reason we are created is to acknowledge that we have the one, the creator that has created us. And for us to be grateful to him. Yeah? Yeah. So just as like I give the example of your parents who's looked after you, brought you to this age, you're a young woman who's working or studying. So by within your nature, do you not feel like some kind of a debt owed to them? My parents? Yeah. Yeah. Allah said in the Quran and I did not create the jinn and the mankind except to worship me so we are created to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and worship doesn't only mean prayer in Islam all the good actions should be done for the sake of Allah and all of that is considered worship for example being good to your parents even if they oppress you because parents have a right over us and there is nothing we can do to repay our mothers for the struggles and the pain they felt while giving birth to us and that's that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said and your Lord has decreed that you worship not accept him and to parents good treatment whether one or both of them reach old age while with you say not to them so much as off but do not repel them but speak to them a noble word and lower to them the wing of humility out of mercy and say my Lord have mercy upon them as they brought me up when I was small in Islam being good to your parents is a form of worship and removing obstacles from the road to help the community is also a form of worship all good actions done for the sake of Allah are considered worship and Allah will reward us for them inshallah the messenger of Allah peace and blessing of Allah be upon him said verily Allah Ta'ala has written down the good deeds and the evil deeds and then explained it by saying whosoever intended to perform a good deed but did not do it then Allah writes it down with himself as a complete good deed and if he intended to perform it and then did perform it then Allah writes it down with himself as from 10 good deeds up to 700 times up to many times multiplied and if he intended to perform an evil deed but did not do it then Allah writes it down with himself as a complete good deed and if he intended it i.e. the evil deed and then performed it then Allah writes it down as one evil deed that's why in Islam intention comes before any action like today I am fasting during Ramadan and I had to make the intention of fasting before Fajr prayer and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us and to keep us on the straight path yeah. so that's why God Almighty told us in the Quran yeah do you think it's, it's God to you like, um, like a man or a woman that's a very good question Poppy I think that was you hit it yeah, on the spot that's a brilliant question so the concept me the concept of believing that God is a man is something my mind my heart my body as a whole doesn't accept but what about a woman or a woman no no same same no same i do not believe a god the one who's created yeah. the heavens and the earth and everything that is here okay, is it gender? No, no there's no gender, there's no gender. god has no, no gender allah the creator of the heavens and the earth and what's between them is the one who created masculine and feminine and allah cannot be described as masculine or feminine you may find the use of masculine pronouns solely for the purpose of communications in human languages and we can't compare allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation allah said he is creator of the heavens and the earth he has made for you from yourselves mates and among the cattle mates he multiplies you thereby there is nothing like unto him and he is the hearing the seeing we cannot liken Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to his creation we believe in the oneness of Allah in his lordship in his worship and his names and attributes so it starts it says uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in the name of Allah the most merciful the very merciful yeah Qul huwa Allahu ahad say the truth is that Allah is one, one. so he's one yeah. okay Allah is samad. Allah is free from all needing. So he's free from all needs. Yeah. Lam yalid wa lam yulad wa lam yakun lahu kufu wa nahad. He neither begot anyone nor was he begotten and equal to him is never been one. 
This is the best description that ever existed for God Almighty. If we compare the description of God in Islam with other religions like Christianity and Judaism, you'll quickly understand that Islam is the only monotheistic religion on the face of the planet. In Christianity, for example, they believe in a trinity. This is sufficient to prove that Christianity is not a monotheistic religion. And they believe God became a baby. Again, that's against the concept of one supreme being and against monotheism. They believe God died for the sins of humanity. Again, this is a pagan belief. And humans and blood sacrifices can never be part of monotheism. In Judaism, they believe that God regretted creating human beings. Genesis 6 verse 6 The Lord regretted that he had made human beings on the earth and his heart was deeply troubled. How can you believe that God has his heart deeply troubled and still claim monotheism? And to regret is a form of weakness. You could only regret if you didn't have the knowledge of the future. And believing that God didn't know something cannot be monotheism. Your God is only Allah, except for whom there is no deity. He has encompassed all things in knowledge. Jews and Christians should come back to true monotheism and believe what they feel in their hearts naturally, not what the Bible and the church say. And read the Quran for the perfect definition of the one true God. Allah, there is no deity except him. The ever-living, the self-sustaining, neither drowsiness overtakes him nor sleep. To him belongs wherever in the heavens and wherever is on the earth. Who is it that can intercede with him except by his permission? He knows what is presently before them and what will be after them. And they encompass not a thing of his knowledge except for what he wills. His courtesy extends over the heavens and the earth and their preservation tires him not. And he is the most high, the most great. Between themselves and God, you see, for example, with Christianity, there's Jesus. With uh, the Hindus, there's many other gods. Yeah. So we in Islam, the main fundamental thing with us is this. Just because you're a sinner, it doesn't mean that you have to go through another person, another divine, like, like another yeah, individual. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Exactly. God is telling us that to worship me and me alone. And that's what God is asking for. Yeah. Do not go through this person and that person. So that's the reason why we believe yeah. God doesn't have a mother, doesn't have a father, doesn't have a son, doesn't have a daughter. There is nothing like him. Yeah. Anything that you can think of him in your head is not him. Yeah. Because everything that you think in your head has a beginning and an end. This was a beautiful reminder from Brother Ali. Christians should think more about the oneness of God and ask themselves why the Christian concept of God is so complicated and is similar to Roman pagan gods. Come back to monotheism and believe that God is the one and only supreme and that Jesus the Messiah is a prophet and a messenger sent by the one true God and that Jesus peace be upon him is not God because to believe that God is a human being is paganism. You need to watch this video to learn more about the corruption of the Bible and the pagan origin of the Trinity. Don't forget to subscribe for daily uploads. Thank you for watching. Assalamu alaikum.